Good morning. Welcome to Redtail Practice Management Spotlight featuring Jeff Rose from Good Financial Sense. I'm Jeremy Nakano, a trainer with Redtail Technology. As a trainer, I work with quite a few advisors and I teach them how to bend our CRM to fit their business. Today, we get to work with an expert in his field who has managed to take Redtail to another level. I find it to be a truly heartwarming experience when I get to work with someone that I get a chance to learn from, Jeff Rose. A little about Jeff. Jeff Rose is a certified financial planner and CEO of Alliance Wealth Management. He is a nine-year veteran of the Army National Guard, which included a 17-month deployment to Iraq to support Operation Iraqi Freedom. He is the author of the best-selling book, Soldier of Finance, Take Charge of Your Money and Invest in Your Future, and the founder of the award-winning blog, Good Financial Sense and Life Insurance by Jeff.com. CNBC nominated him to be part of the Digital Financial Advisor Council, and Financial Advisor Magazine pegged him as one of the top 10 young advisors to watch. When he's not juggling his four kids and 12-year-old boxer, he's torturing himself with CrossFit workouts and daydreaming about the, the next time he'll be chowing down on an In-N-Out burger. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Rose. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for that uh, introduction. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or morning, depending on where you're at in the country. Uh, this is Jeff Rose, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, Jeremy already gave a pretty well, uh, warm welcome as far as who I am. So Jeff Rose, I'm a certified financial planner, and uh, he did mention one of the things that most people know about me. Uh, I currently live in the Midwest, Southern Illinois to be exact, but uh, there was a time that I did live on the West Coast. And while I was there, I became obsessed that is right, obsessed with a burger joint called In-N-Out Burger. And for those of you that have not had the privilege of experiencing In-N-Out Burger, I, uh, man, I just feel, I just feel sorry for you because it is by far the best burger, uh, I think, in the world. And I know that's a very tall and bold claim, but I stand by that claim. So every time I am in the West Coast, I am eating In-N-Out Burger or getting my Uber driver to take me to In-N-Out Burger so my wife can snap this photo. Um, and like I said, I just, every time I go to Nut Burger, I relive uh, this moment and even got my wife on board too. So she loves In-N-Out Burger just as much as I do. Uh, other than that, uh, Jeremy also mentioned I do have uh, four kids. So I have three sons and then our daughter who we just adopted from the Philippines last July. Uh, she just turned two in November. She's currently taking a nap. So that's why you won't not hear her knocking on daddy's office door. Uh, but those, that's the fam. Uh, that's, uh, we say, half dozen roses, uh, my wife Mandy, and we do our best to uh, just, just <laughs> keep her head above water. Uh, all our kids play sports, so it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge, but we also love it every step of the way. So that's a little bit on the personal side as far as the business side. Uh, I am uh, the CEO founder of Alliance Wealth Management. We're a reg registered investment advisory firm located in Carbondale, Illinois. And uh, other than that, I'm pretty well known as, as far as my online presence. It all started with my blog, Good Financial Sense, which I launched in July of 2008. And starting that blog, even though at the time I knew absolutely nothing about blogging, nothing about online marketing, but just felt just compelled and faith that this was going to pay off. And sure enough, fast forward to present day, uh, these are just some of the things that have happened. So uh, last year I was nominated to be a part of CNBC's Digital Financial Advisor Council. Uh, I'm a contributor to Forbes, CNBC as well, Business Insider, Huffington Post, US News, and a few others. Uh, my stuff has been featured pretty much everywhere. This is one of the articles that was featured on time.com. Um, but, you know, being a contributor to all these major sites, it's uh, uh, more of a common thing, I guess, to be featured, not as a big deal as it is for me now, as it once was when I first started blogging and uh, online marketing. My first book, Soldier of Finance, came out a few years ago, and if you ever had a book published in Barnes Noble, you go to Barnes & Noble and you get a picture taken with your book. So my book, Soldier of Finance, which tied in my nine-year history and uh, being in the military and just tie that, tie that in with my passion for personal finance. This was an opportunity I got to work with John Hancock uh, in New York a few years ago. Got a chance to meet Chris O'Donnell, the actor. Um, I think he's on NCIS. I only know him from Robin Hood and uh, Batman and Robin, or Robin Hood. Robin from Batman and Robin. 
probably the worst Batman movie ever, but uh, cool guy, also originally from Illinois. And then uh, last year, Financial Advisor Magazine named me to be their one of their top 10 young advisors to watch. And I show you all this, not so you can say, oh, good for you, Jeff, but really to just show you that even though that I live in Southern Illinois, I live in Carbondale, which some of you may have heard of it, probably doubt that many of you have, it is a small college university town. I think our population is just under 25,000. And despite that, I've been able to get myself featured in a lot of different places. And it just shows you the power of online marketing and having a blog and having an online presence. It's something, as I said, I believed in 2008, even though I didn't know what I was doing, but I was determined to figure it out. And I know that there are a lot of advisors out there that are like me in the sense that they believe online marketing and blogging have a ton of potential, but they just wish they had a plan or a process to get started. And I'm curious, so for those of you that are here uh, that maybe have a blog or ha have been dabbling in online marketing or maybe that you know you need to and haven't yet, but you know, is that you? You know, like you know that has a lot of potential, you know that social media is here, you know online marketing is here. I mean, this is not just the future, it is the present. But a lot of advisors I talk to just don't know where to start because there's so many different things that you can do nowadays. And I know that's exactly where I was in the beginning. I didn't know where to start. I just, I just did uh, and figured it out uh, through a lot of trial and error and, uh, and here I am today. So most of you, this probably sounds familiar. You know, you know it has potential, but you just don't know where to get started. So after doing this for about eight plus years, a few things that I figured out. Um, how to receive a never ending supply of leads without having to cold call, do another seminar, or attend a civic luncheon. And for me, you know, I started my career doing seminars. I started my career doing cold calling. And it worked in the beginning. Uh, and I guess it could work today, but I don't want to cold call anymore. I don't want to do any more seminars. I like the idea of publishing content online and then letting people contact us on their own free will. And that is a lot more appealing to me than trying to beg people to come to another lunch or dinner you know, for a seminar. Uh, I've also figured out, as I've shown, you know, how to get recognized in major media sites like Forbes, CNBC, and Time you know, as a financial planning expert. And also figured out how to truly impact thousands of lives while also growing your business with right fit clients. And this is something you know, we can talk about quality of life and, and balance and just making sure that you, know, that you really enjoy what you're doing. And one of the things that I love is that, you know, at the beginning of my career, I think every advisor can relate to this. You know, I took on clients that probably weren't a good, actually, no, that were not a good fit. There was no probably. They were not a good fit. But I did it because I needed to grow my business. I needed uh, to pay the bills. I needed to increase my production. So I took on as many people as I could. And now, you know, to be the state where you can truly pick the clients that you want to work with, the people that are a good fit for you and your practice and you know, your team members, uh, but also impacting thousands of lives you know, by putting content out there that's going to truly help people. And that is just something that I've enjoyed and is definitely a strategic byproduct of all I've experienced with the blog and online marketing. So just a little bit more information. You know, the last 30 days, just to kind of give you an example, um, I've been able to produce over 1,659 leads through one of my websites, uh, I have two. I think you mentioned goodfinancialsense.com is the one I'm most well known for. Uh, that is my financial planning blog. I also have another site called Life Insurance by Jeff and a few other, uh, other sites that you'll see. If you go to my blog, you'll see them at the bottom. Uh, so these are basically people that have come to my website. They have signed up for our email list and then we're able to drip on them with additional content. I know I get a lot of questions on that. So, you know, these are not 1,659 people that have a 401k rollover that they're ready to, you know, give us their money. These are just people that have been to my site. Uh, they've read something that they've resonated with that they like and they want more information. So they sign up for our email newsletter and then we drip on them, which I'll show you here in a minute. So just to also give a little bit more, I guess, full proof in the pudding. So this is a screenshot of my blog. If for those that have a website, this is uh, Google Analytics. 
And in the last 30 days, I had of over 657,000 people visit my blog. And when I see this, it still blows my mind because if you have a site, you have a blog, if you've checked your analytics, I know when I started in the beginning, I was happy to get 10 people to visit my site in a day. Uh, then it grew to like 50 people, then 100 people, then 1,000 people. And now, you know, when I see 20, 25, 30,000 people come to my site in one day, it blows my mind. Uh, this did not happen overnight. This definitely took time to get there, but uh, nonetheless, it's still a lot of people coming to my blog to check it out. And I guess I should also mention with that traffic is I don't do a lot of paid advertising. I do some Facebook promotion, but that's it. So this is not paid um, Google ads. This is not uh, any other advertising networks. This is just pure organic traffic. So people going into Google, typing in some sort of keyword or phrase, and then finding my site. So that's what represents, I'd say, about 97% of what that traffic is. But my goal today, you know, for all you here that are part of the Redtail community, is to give you my number one growth tactic. And this is something that I think every advisor could be doing, uh, every advisor should be doing, and is a way just to show you how do you convert your website visitors into new client meetings. And this is a growth tactic that I didn't do for the first three years, maybe longer. Uh, and I definitely contribute it to being one of the two biggest mistakes I've made when it came to online marketing. Now, I've made a lot more than two mistakes. I promise you that. But these are by far the two biggest mistakes that I've made that I wish I could quantify like you know, how much that cost me. But let's just say it's probably a lot. But the best part, though, is that you don't have to continue to make that mistake that I've made. So the first mistake, you know, for me was building my list. And if you read anything on online marketing, you, you may have heard the expression as far as, you know, the money is in the list. You need to grow your list. And they're referring to you know, growing an email list. And if you have clients, then chances are you have their email address. So you send them out a newsletter or have some way of corresponding with them. And that's not really what we're talking about. I mean, yeah, you're growing your list because you're growing your clients. That's good. What I'm referring to is growing your email list of prospects, of leads, of potential clients. And for me, in the beginning, I didn't get it because I thought, man, I got all these people coming to my site. Like, what am I going to send them in an email list? Like, why am I going to, to collect their email addresses? It didn't make sense to me. And when I finally got it and I realized, you know what, if I ever want to contact that person again, that somebody that came to my site, a year ago, two years ago, and I don't have their email address, and I'm just hoping that they'll come back to my site and Google me and, and request to maybe uh, have an initial meeting with me. Like I'm, I'm asking a lot of that person, and chances are, like that's not going to happen. So having the ability to contact people when you want, you know, with their email list to promote yourself, your services, or any sort of material that you may have. It could be a new blog post, it could be a podcast, it could be a webinar, it could be your book that you just wrote, whatever that may be, that's something that you can do in the list. And the three companies I've shared, you know, MailChimp, AWeber, ConvertKit, uh, these are all different email service providers that you can use. Uh, you don't, there are others out there. I think these are by far some of the most cost efficient and user friendly. MailChimp is the top right there. I think they're free up to 2,000 email subscribers. And after that, you have to pay a fee. Uh, AWeber is another email service provider. I think they start off around 20 bucks a month and then ConvertKit there on the top left. That's the one that I use currently. But you can, and they start off, I think, like at $30 a month. But the cool thing, uh, which I'll show here in a, in a minute, is that MailChimp, I know, does sync with Redtail. So if you have email addresses you want to send out a newsletter or you want to send out uh, something with prospects, it does sync with Redtail. So that's a good thing to know. And I'll talk more about that here as we go along. So that was a mistake. I didn't collect email addresses. And like I said, it was just a mistake in the sense that if I wanted, if I had something to promote, like recently we've been doing a lot more webinars, well, how are they going to know about the webinar? 
Do I put a something on Facebook and hope that they follow or liked my firm page or my blog? Do they follow me on Twitter or do I send them an email? So that's the power and one of the reasons why you have uh, to collect those email addresses. You might not have anything to promote right now, but you want to have those email addresses for later on when you, you will have something to promote, especially if you start dabbling more in online marketing or it could be to promote a local seminar as well, you know, if you still want to go that route. The other mistake that I made was giving them a reason to sign up. And this is a common mistake I see with a lot of advisor sites and just a lot of business sites that are trying to get email addresses. And essentially what this is, is that you want to give, re you want to get people a reason to sign up because if you see the common language on a site that says sign up for our free newsletter or sign up to get free updates. If you think about that and you're on a site, any website, and that is their pitch to you that, hey, give me your email address so I can give you free updates. I mean, to me, unless there's just something about that site that is overall compelling, sounds like I'm just going to get spammed to death. Like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get my email address out anymore. I get enough spam, you know, in my inbox. So why am I going to give you my email address? And the one simple way that you can do that is offering what's called a lead magnet. A lead magnet, all it is, is an incentive to give somebody to give the email address. So it's like an exchange. And when I first started collecting email addresses, I did the method that I just said, don't do. I said, oh, sign up for my newsletter to get free updates. I did get email, I did get people to subscribe, so it can work, but here's the funny thing, or the sad thing, is that the, the minute or the day after I added a lead magnet, my email subscribers more than doubled, almost immediately, more than doubled. So I went, I think about a year and a half, two years not offering a lead magnet, and you know when I was getting 20, to 30, well, let's say 20 to 25 email subs a day, I went to 50 to 60 email subscribers every single day just by offering a lead magnet. And what I offered was a, I called it, and I still call it the money dominating toolkit. So that is my lead magnet. This is actually a, uh, my old design. I'll show you the screenshot of the new site. But before you click on that button, and then you would see this, and this is what entices people to enter the email address. So what I'm giving them is inside access to our money dominating toolkit, exclusive two chapters from my book, Soldier Finance, and advice how to build real wealth. So all I'm really including in this, yes, I have two chapters of my book, but everything else, all it is is a single page, all they are are single page PDFs. So we're not talking 35 page eBooks, we're not talking like a comprehensive video course or a long email series or it, all they are are just single page PDFs. Some of them are repurposed blog posts, which I'll show some examples here. Uh, some are just like checklists and I'm gonna give you some ideas so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But this isn't something that took a year to create. I mean, this is something that could have been completed in a week or two as long as you got access to a decent graphic designer. If you don't, there are plenty of sites online that you can find one for pretty cheap. So once I added the lead magnet, as I said, my email subscribers jumped through the roof. This is a screenshot of my current site. So similar concept, and we got the button there at the top. Get started here, click that, and then same thing. So haven't changed what the lead magnet is, but we're still offering that, and we're still getting people to subscribe. And the reason is, is the lead magnet. You are enticing them. Um, that, to me, I, I just see so many sites that don't offer anything. And I think the other thing is that when you're offering something, make sure it there is some value to it. I mean, you it can't be, oh, sign up to get this thing just because. You know, like, what is that thing going to do for that person? How is it going to fix their problem? How is it going to solve, you know, whatever their whatever they're trying to get a resolution to. I mean, it has to solve something. So make sure that your messaging is clear in that. So if you don't have a book, you know, I do, I'm able to use the two chapters of my book as one of the lead magnets. You know, here are some other options that you can use. 
So one of my favorite things is repurpose old blog post. So these two are just some examples of different lead magnets that we've created. So the one on the left, the six mistakes retirees make that royally, royally screw up their retirement, and then the low known strategies to maximize your social security income. All these are, are blog posts that are already published on the site. We just took those blog posts and I paid a graphic designer, I think it was $30 each to convert them into a six or seven page PDF. Uh, we put the picture on the front. Here we're using our firm logo. I have some others where I use the blog logo. But all I'm doing is taking something that I've already wrote, that it's already published, and I'm then incorporating that into a lead magnet. Now the cool thing is, is that you can use this as a lead magnet on your website, your firm site, or a blog if you have it. You can also use this. We also will include these depending on the client and their situation, but we'll print these out on kind of like a heavier cardstock uh, paper to where it's a little bit thicker, you know, a little bit firmer than normal printer paper. And then we'll include this into a welcome packet that we'll send or have ready for like a new prospect that comes into the office. So we use these both virtually and also uh, locally in, uh, in hard copy form. So we can get multiple uses out of this. And the more that you hear me talk, especially regarding online marketing, I'm a big proponent of reusing, repurposing, recycling content so that you're getting multiple uses out of it. And this is just one way that you can do that. Another lead magnet, lead magnet example. So this is uh, Matt Becker who owns the site momanddadmoney.com, also a financial planner. So he uh, focuses more on families. So helping families uh, you know, with their finances. And he offers the financial roadmap. So you click on his button and then you'll see a little 3D image there of the new family financial roadmap. And I like his example because it really ties into what his niche is, who he's focusing on. You know, it, mom and dad money, the website, the, the branding, the new family financial roadmap. I mean, it's just, it speaks to whoever that is. You know, if you're a baby boomer, that's not appealing to you. And that's okay because that's not the type of client that he's trying to work with. But that's another good example of a lead magnet. So what are some other examples that you can use? As I mentioned, uh, previously written blog posts. Uh, we have used these, I think we have 12 currently that we've converted. And I could do a lot more, but I really don't need to that at this point because they all kind of, uh, we have enough to sa satisfy our needs. So, but if you already have something written uh, on a blog, if you don't have a blog, maybe you wrote an article for the newspaper or another publication, you could also take that and turn it into a lead magnet. So it doesn't have to be something that you wrote. It could be something that maybe you were quoted in or another article that you might think offers value. Uh, you can turn that into a lead magnet. Another common thing or an easy thing that you can do are cheat sheets. And I don't know, just the word cheat, it just, I don't know, people feel like, oh, like I'm getting the insider secrets. Uh, so like it just entices them to, they're just compelled. Like, oh my gosh, a cheat sheet, I, got, I have to give you my email address. And a cheat sheet could be, you know, tough questions to ask financial advisors before you hire them. I mean, this is a, a one page PDF that just has five questions, seven questions, however many you want to put, but just kind of gives your belief and why these are uh, questions you should ask and just important questions. And just something like this can be very simple. Or you could have a cheat sheet on, you know, how to identify the hidden fees in variable annuities. Or it could be hidden fees in mutual fund accounts or hidden fees in uh, management accounts, you know, wherever that may be. So, I mean, there are different things that you can include as far as cheat sheets. Guides, all-encompassing guides are another thing. So, best sites for baby boomers. You know, maybe there's a collection of sites that are good for baby boomers. It could be AARP, maybe sites to look about medical, uh, Medicare, health insurance, uh, hobbies in retirement. Just like a quick collection of different sites that are good resources for baby boomers put together in one comprehensive PDF so that you become that go-to resource for them. Uh, I have a guide, was a blog post that we turned into a guide. It's called, uh, it's for Roth IRA conversions. You know, that's another one that uh, I've done that you could also do. Social security, uh, just a, a variety of things. Another PDF that I include in my money dominating toolkit is the best, uh, 
best financial apps or uh, best financial software uh, on the web that you can get. Um, so just once again, you know, I did a little bit of research to find out what some of those sites are. And like I include sites like Mint uh, and uh, you know, like a budgeting software and um, personal capital and some others on there just so they can see, oh, okay, here's some cool tools that I can use, you know, to get my finances on track. This one is a little bit more involved, but you can have an email or video series. So if people sign up, maybe if you've seen this before, sometimes people have courses and that sounds really involved, but a course could simply be a three or four email autoresponder. Uh, a site like ConvertKit, the email service provider that we talked about previously, Aweber, you know, they allow to have those autoresponders. So people sign up and they automatically get emails delivered to them over the course of however many days that you do it. Like I said, that takes a little bit more involvement, and that's something I didn't have in the beginning, but something that I have added as I've gone along. And if you want to take it to the next level, then you can also turn that into a video series. Uh, that does take a little bit more work, but it does help bring your personality and make you more to life you know, to that prospect or lead that's signing up for your list. So once people sign up, that's really where the magic happens. So there's a, a variety of things, and this is where, you know, you think about a CRM like Redtail. I know that before I started using Redtail, I would, I'd have to set up like automatic or uh, reminders to call people. You know, if I cold call somebody today and they told me to follow up with them two months from now, like I was sending a to-do to call them. And we use that, you know, for client meetings, we'll do the automated, uh, automated, automated feature in Redtail for that. But to drip, on people that just sign up for your email list, like th that could be very, very involved. And one of the ways that it's automated for me and how we do this is that we drip on them, and which I refer to as the value-driven sales funnel. So as it stands right now, when somebody signs up for the money dominating toolkit, they then go into a follow-up series. And this is the first four emails that come out. Um, and you can see there in the middle, they get one immediately, get one two days later, one seven days later, another one seven days later. And then over the next, we start spreading them out between seven and 14 days. But basically what you're seeing there is that when somebody signs up for my money dominating toolkit now, they then get put on a autoresponder series where they're going to get 29 emails from me over the next year, about. So without doing anything today, if somebody signed up today, they're gonna to get 29 emails from me without me doing anything more. And a next question I usually get is like, well, what exactly are you sending them? You know, that seems like a lot of work. And it was a lot of work, but here's the beauty of this. I've already shared with you how you can take a previously written blog post and turn that into a PDF. You could use that as a lead magnet. You could also take that exact same blog post and use that as part of as your autoresponder series, as part of your value-driven sales funnel. So you're basically just repurposing the same content that you've already published, but now you're using that in an email series. And then a question I, I always get is like, well, Jeff, if they've already read it on your blog, on your firm site, do you really want to send it to them in an email format? And the answer is, yeah, you do. And the reason is, is that if I pulled up my analytics on my site, you would see that the average visitor will only view about one and a half to two pages per visit. So even though I have over like a thousand pages published, a thousand posts and pages on my site, the average visitor is going to go to maybe two at the very most. So if you have a site, if you have a blog, and you have a lot of articles published, chances of them actually going back and reading something that you published a month ago, two months ago, six months ago, is slim to none. So being able to use that same blog post and use that as part of your drip campaign, you're getting multiple uses out of it. You obviously want to make sure that there's any information in there that is time sensitive or you know, if you have any dates in there, just be conscious of that. You know, we try to make everything evergreen. So it reads as if it was written today. It doesn't feel like that it's dated. And there are some times we have to go back and adjust some of that information. But that is the power in doing this. It's completely automated. You're not having to 
manually send a, uh, an email to each person, you know, every other day, you know, keeping track of when to sell them or send it to them, it does it for you. And the cool thing about this, I mean, there are tons of stories I can share, but the one that I, I, I still use as an example was we had a lady that contacted us for a, uh, we call it a free chat, which is like our introductory meeting for anybody wanting to work with us. And she made a comment that, yeah, she's like, I went to your blog, it was like three or four years ago, but to be honest, I haven't been back since. But I signed up for your email newsletter, and I remember reading one of your articles where it talked about you know, investing into a penny stock, and you can actually see it there, number 28. So this is a, a story that I shared that I turned into uh, a blog post, and I include that in my email series. And she read that, and it just really resonated with her. She wasn't interested in investing into penny stocks. She was actually was selling a business and now needed to you know, talk with a financial planner. She didn't need that service the day that she signed up or from the day she signed up until the time that we actually talked. But by getting my email delivered to her inbox at the right time, that triggered her to call us and set up an appointment. And that's that's what I love about this is that this, I don't even know who this lady was. Uh, I just know that she signed up for my email list four years ago and she got an email and that prompted her to call. And that's the power in having this value-driven sales funnel. But the other thing I want to talk about this is that this is not a hard promotion in, hey, you need to work with us. Like, you need to hire a, a financial planner and here's why. Why I refer to it as the value-driven sales funnel is because we're offering value first. So our goal here is to give value, to offer help, to, uh, to give them just things to think about, things to consider in their financial planning journey. And then we'll offer webinars, you know, more education. Occasionally we'll sprinkle in, you know, a chance to talk with us, you know, if they are wanting a second opinion, but it's very not in your face. It's very, we just take a, a very backseat approach. We want to offer value first to earn their trust and confidence. So then at that point in time, they want to reach out to us, you know, about working with us, then they can, but we're not, Really, we're not in their face with it at all. It's just offering good content that's going to offer value to their lives. So some other things that we've been able to incorporate, you know, having the no pressure contact. So in addition to the value driven sales funnel, I just started this a couple of years ago, but it's a, a button on the sidebar. It says, ask Jeff a question. So if you click on that, it takes you to a contact form. And basically, we're asking anybody that wants to ask a question, they can. So the beauty of this is that I have an associate advisor right now. Uh, he actually takes the lead and answers all these questions. Uh, some of them are, you know, not good fits, you know, for the practice. But others, this is how another way that we can earn trust. Because they can ask a question without getting a sales pitch. You know, they're going to get an answer from a qualified financial advisor. And the other cool thing is that we've actually turned a lot of these questions into blog posts. So I started a new series called Ask GFC, so any questions that you have. And you can see like some of the questions, you know, salary versus stock options, when does it make sense? Does Roth IRA conversion make sense when I'm already retired? Help, I've inherited a million dollars in an IRA, fitting uh, a health savings, health savings account into your budget. So these are all real questions that people have submitted to the site and then we're able to answer their question. So just another way to earn trust, but it, giving people an easy access where maybe they're not ready to give you your, your email address, but they can ask you a quick question and you can respond to them and give them an answer and actually give them value. Then once again, like you're earning, the, you're earning their trust. So other easy access is really just spelling out like how it looks like to work with you and your firm. And doing so in a way that is different and unique than other advisors out there. So we have the work with me page and you can check that out on the blog. We also have our unique process, which is called the financial success blueprint. In addition to that, all our scheduling, unless they are local and they call into the office, everybody else schedules using an online scheduler. So they can click that button on the site. We have that same thing on our firm site and then they get a chance to choose what that option looks like. Our, we call it a free different, uh, call it a few different things, but free chat is by far the most common name that we refer to it as. Uh, we can also call it a retirement planning strategy session. But essentially what we just 
pitch is, and we do this through our email funnel, through our ask, uh, our ask page, ask Jeff, uh, ask Jeff a question page, is, you know, if you're wanting more information and you just want to get on a call, you know, we offer a free chat. Sometimes we call it a retirement planning strategy session to where if there's any questions that you want, you can talk to a qualified advisor and, you know, just be able to pick our brain. As I mentioned, my associate advisor takes the lead on those. So uh, if you click that on our book appointment page, you will not see me as an option. You'll see him. And we get a lot of inquiries that way. So this is how we're kind of walking people through our funnel and getting people to actually take action, pick up the phone, and meet with us. So some other offerings you can you can offer in this. Uh, you can do this through your email funnel. You can do this through you know webinars, the free chat, retirement planning strategy session. We do a annuity strategy session based on another webinar that we offer, long care, a uh, long-term care strategy session. Um, if you have access to like a Morningstar report, you could also do like a portfolio x-ray. A little bit more work involved in that, so you actually have to get some information from them uh, to be able to input that into Morningstar, but it's something to where if they've never had that done before, you can offer that as a potential lead magnet or some sort of incentive for them to contact you. Uh, you can also do an annuity x-ray. Uh, we partnered with a company that can basically tell a client, you know, what their total return is, what their total fees are inside their annuity. So that's something else that we're able to offer. So with all this, would actually, other than our email service provider, it would be a nightmare to track everything that we have going on with all the different projects and, and uh, leads and emails that we have going out. And really, I mean, that's where Redtail has saved our butt. Uh, I don't know how many times, countless times. Uh, Redtail technology, you know, just kind of my history with Redtail. I was with a broker, broker dealer that uh, sold out and then I went independent and looked for a CRM. Uh, I tried, and I cannot think of the name. I think it was ACT, I believe, I recall. I think I did that one for a year maybe or so and just, I don't know, just got fed up with it. I wanted something that was in the cloud, something that was accessible from different devices, and that's when I stumbled onto Redtail. I've uh, been with Redtail now for, I would say, about the same time I've been blogging, maybe a little bit longer, eight years or longer. Um, I, I will give the disclaimer that I did switch to Salesforce when my brokerage firm, my current firm, that's now my clearinghouse, partnered with them because they said that the integration was going to be seamless and we wasted 90 days messing with that and realized basically that we were just trying to build Redtail within Salesforce. We said, screw that. So we uh, went back to Redtail, you know, with our tail between our legs, uh, pun intended, and uh, we've been with Redtail ever since. So I did have like about a 90 day hiatus where I was not with them and that was definitely a mistake. So if you're using Redtail, you kind of know a lot of the stuff. If you're still on the fence of using Redtail, you know, this is a screenshot. Uh, this is actually from their, uh, their site. This is not my personal Redtail. But you can see, you know, all the things that you can keep track of. You know, activities for the day, recently added notes, all your client information. There is a ton and ton of information here that can streamline your business, streamline your practice, especially if you have multiple team members. And that is what has been the case, you know, as my team has been growing over the last few years, is just having a central location that we can go that houses all this client information and that we just know what each other is doing. And the way that I've been able to kind of tie in Redtail, you know, with online marketing is a variety of ways. And the biggest one was using workflows. And I'm not, if you know a little bit about me, I'm not a process, I don't like to build processes. Uh, building processes, I'm the type of person I've always lied to myself and said, oh, I can just, I'll do it myself or the way I do it's better. Uh, that, that's a lie. Uh, so workflows are essential, especially the more that you can systemize, systematize your business and have repeatable steps and to be able to put those steps in a workflow or as I would call like the Lego instruction booklet to make it super easy especially when you start having turnover of employees and, and having to train new people, that's where a workflow, it's already done for you. And one of the workflows that we've been able to incorporate that has been a huge help is those that are requesting our unique financial planning process, the financial success blueprint. So this is our financial planning process. This is the entry point for anybody that wants to work with us. And 
there are obviously certain steps that have to be done as that process goes. And we were we created a workflow in Redtail that basically says, you know, what needs to be done, who that's assigned to, uh, what tasks need to be done, and we can then keep track of that every step of the way. Uh, workflows are easy to set up, and if you have any issues, which I know in the beginning when we first started setting up workflows in Redtail, you know, it was new to us. I think they had some training that we watched, but we still just needed some assistance, just making sure that we had it done right. And I recall my office manager got on the phone with somebody from Redtail and walked her through getting this set up properly. And workflows, to me, if you don't have this in your business, you're you're missing out. You're you're missing out a key part of being efficient and just man, just keeping track of stuff and making sure that clients prospects are being follow, followed up the way they should be. So workflows, you log into Redtail, you'll see that on the left, and you can create as many workflows as you want. Another non-negotiable for me, uh, so this is a screenshot from uh, my Redtail, but is email archiving. And for us, you know, being able to see what we have emailed the client, what the client has emailed us, wh and that whether it's coming from me, my office manager, or my associate advisor, to be able to have that directly connected to the client record is, it's just, it's mandatory, it's required. If we didn't have that information, we would have to dig, you know, just through the notes and trying to find that lost in the email chains of, oh, wait, what did you email the client? What was said? Well, you know, you go to the client history or client record, click on email history, you see that. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I can't tell you how much that has, how often that has saved us hours upon hours of frustration trying to find that correspondence. And it doesn't matter if it's coming, the email's coming from you, your office manager, or any one of your team members, it's going to be there for you. So email archiving with Redtail is, is like I said, it's a non-negotiable in our practice right now. I don't know how we would operate without that function. Another way, so this is another way that incorporates, can sync with uh, email service providers, especially like MailChimp, if you're sending out newsletters, is to create tags and quick lists. And this is just an ability to pull up short, easy lists of different clients, prospects, whoever you're wanting to contact, whether you want to send them an email or maybe you want to send them a newsletter, maybe you want to send them who knows what. So one of the things that we've done, and this, this list is a lot longer than what you see, is you can have like all your A, B, C, D clients, E clients, if you go down that far. If you have clients that were a direct referral from say an attorney or a CPA, you can tag them so that if you want to send, you just have them all neatly organized. Uh, if there are a certain type of uh, investment managers that you're using for clients and you want to tag them, you can tag those really easily. And it's just a quick way to pull that information in like two clicks. Tags and quick lists have been another game changer for us. So we do this, you know, for head of household list, that is basically when we're going to send out a mass mailing to all our clients, but then if we want to just target A clients, B clients, and so forth, we can do that as well. And these are just some of the, the functions and features that uh, Redtail allows you to do. The cool thing, what I didn't realize, the more data that you have in Redtail, um, you can pull up and segment your client list. So for example, if you see advanced search there. So for example, if you're trying to build a quick list of all your clients that are between the ages of 50 and 60 years old, if for some reason you wanted that information, you could search for that in Redtail and find that information, have a quick list ready for them really easily. Um, to have that information, you have to have the input in Redtail. So the more information that you put into Redtail, as we've learned through the years, the more you're going to get out of it. So try to input as much information as you can. So in addition to workflows, another thing that we started doing, and this has actually worked out well for, with me hiring an associate advisor. Um, he right now is pretty much in charge of bringing in new business, as far as like talking to them directly, uh, having meetings with them. And me wanting just to keep track of how are we, how are we doing, you know, with these prospects. You know, Redtail has a tab function they call opportunities. So it allows you to enter any prospects, qualified leads, qualified prospects, 
in there, it also syncs to their record. So if you're entering notes in there, you'll be able to see all that. So I can see what Andrew has talked to them, what he's emailed them, and so on and so forth. But we can also see where we are in that process. And it's just a fun way. Um, I took the screenshot a little while ago. This has grown, obviously, since then. But it's just a, a neat way that we can keep track of opportunities that we're working on and just to see where we are. Like, I can click here and see, oh, hey, it's been 60 days since you followed up with so-and-so. Like, you know, where are, we, where are we at with that? And just an easy way to trigger that conversation. Another thing that I just recently discovered, and we are starting to incorporate this more with Redtail, if you do seminars, this is pretty much a no-brainer, but, you know, we don't do seminars, we do webinars. And with those webinars, we want to be able to track, you know, how many people attended, how many people scheduled an appointment with us, you know, what do they look like as far as, you know, total assets and, you know, type of client fit. So now what we're using Redtail for is to keep track of those things. This does have to be manually entered in, um, but for now, like we're okay with that. Uh, we've looked at a few different uh, tools that might be able to sync those automatically, but right now, you know, my office manager, we're, we're, she's taking the lead on that, and we're doing these manually as now, manually as of now. But nonetheless, that data is there, the information is there that we can see, you know, who those people are, those leads are, and where they're at. And then we can also turn those into opportunities uh, once we get to the point that we feel that they're, they've reached that status. And once again, these are just some really fun easy ways that Redtail has been able to make my practice, our practice, just run that much more efficiently. And I believe this is the last slide. You can't talk about Redtail, you can't really talk about any sort of software that, without talking about it syncing with other partners. And I mentioned earlier about how we, I switched to Salesforce for 90 days and then regrettably came back, you know, in a heartbeat. And it, it, the reason I left was the integration, and the integration wasn't there in that regards. But with Redtail, the integration is there. And these are some of the softwares that I use in our practice that all integrate with Redtail. So Arado, that I use that for my email archiving and compliance. Redtail also does email archiving. I use Redtail as kind of like as a backup, you know, to Arado, but that handles, you know, my compliance of just keeping uh, email secure. So they integrate with Arado. Blueleaf, that's what I use for our account aggregation software. That integrates with Redtail. Instream Wealth is our financial planning software, same thing. Morningstar, MailChimp, Mobile Assistant is what we use for all client notes. And then what I love about Mobile Assistant is that you call in a note for a client meeting, whether it's me or someone on my team, it automatically goes into Redtail. And all my office manager has to do is right click and add it to that client record so that we can see all those notes there from that client meeting. So once again, these are all integration partners that we use that just make running the practice so much more efficient. And that's one, one of, if not a lot of different reasons why we love Redtail. Awesome. So I say the past hour, luckily it's actually been about 48 minutes. So we've learned some cool things to ramp up your online marketing efforts. Uh, there's still a ton to cover, but we can't do that in a one-hour webinar, obviously. But don't worry. If you are interested, I have a special offer that you can get everything that you need to know. And I do have a course that talks about more in depth what I shared today. It's called the Online Advisor Growth Formula. And essentially how this came to be was I've had a lot of advisors contact me through the years asking me, Jeff, how have you grown your online presence the way that you have? Like, what was your multi-step, what was your step-by-step -step formula? You know, what's your secrets? And I just started answering that question to a lot of different advisors, and then I started charging consulting, and then uh, I said, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna create a course. So I created a course called the Online Advisor Growth Formula, which is exactly everything I've just outlined and a whole lot more. And just talks about everything from blogging to online marketing to social media, webinars, email marketing, everything that you need to do to grow that online presence. So if you're interested, you can go to joinoagf.com and to take a look at it, and you can just uh, go there for more information. All right, and then also too, if you are interested in more training, so this is actually a shorter version of a little bit longer webinar that I do. Um, we talked a little bit about one secret. You know, here are the three secrets that I, I share in the longer webinar. Uh, secret number one, why most advisor websites are failing and what to do instead. I see a lot of mistakes. We talked a little bit about them today with the lead magnets and uh, 
the uh, email list, but there are a lot more that can be changed. Secret number two is you don't have to be an internet marketing expert to have success, it just takes a plan. And then secret number three, it doesn't take years to grow a strong online brand, but it does require strategic hustle. So this is something that I just offer additional training, uh, just like a free workshop. And if you're interested, you'll, I think you'll get an email eventually, just talks about it. Uh, you can opt in if you want, you can unsubscribe if you want, completely up to you, but just be able to want to offer more content uh, to help, help you all out. So that is something that you could be on the lookout for. And that's it. So that's part of my presentation. And as you can see, I mean, online marketing is something that I have a passion for that I love, but if I'm not keeping everything organized, then it just does not work. And that's where Redtail comes in and literally saves the day. I, mean, I picture like Redtail, like with like the Superman cape or something like that, but uh, it's been a big help. So thank you all for being part of the Redtail family. Thank you, Jeff, for being, uh, for doing this. This was very enlightening. I appreciate everything you did. Um, and I hope everyone has a blessed week.